Okay, that is 1 p.m. British summertime. Welcome to this week's live market and trade analysis session with me, Patrick Munnerly. Before we get going today, let's first of all adhere to the risk disclaimer and most important with respect to today's presentation. The views expressed by me are solely mine. They're not indicative or representative of those held by Tickmill UK or Tickmill Europe Limited. Those of you here for the first time, a brief introduction to myself. After I graduated from university, I joined a city PLC consulting firm. I left with some colleagues and went on to successfully co-found and exit a consulting startup, which was focused on C-suite executive search for technology businesses. Essentially, I had a front row seat to the dot-com bubble, witnessing people make and lose a fortune in the market, sometimes quite literally overnight. So I decided to explore my curiosity for markets with some capital to play with and some time on my hands. I started day trading the S&P 500 or more appropriately at that stage, day gambling. After some early beginner's luck, I racked up some pretty solid gains. However, as is often the case, my beginner's luck ran out. And as the market phase changed, I began to average down, giving back all my gains and ultimately experiencing a significant six figure hit to my personal capital. Say this was a gut-wrenching and sobering experience is an understatement. I really had to stand back and figure out if it was feasible for me to make a living from the market. So I decided to get serious about trading and sought out a mentor with an excellent trading track record. Working with my mentor for a period of 18 months to two years was a time during which I upped not just my technical game in terms of researching, developing extensively back and forward testing strategies that crucially suited my personality, all of which were underpinned by a rigorous risk management approach. But most importantly, during the period of mentorship, I significantly developed my mental game. And probably most importantly all, of all, I made the watershed shift from being a highly goal-oriented individual focused on financial gains to becoming purely process-oriented. So what does that mean? Well, it means I had to stop focusing on what I could make from the markets and start focusing solely on managing my mindset to allow me to consistently execute my trading strategy, oftentimes in the face of negative feedback from the markets in the form of losing trades. But once you become process orientated and you have a professional trading mindset and you understand the true nature of trading being a numbers game in which you're simply playing the probabilities, you lose that emotional investment and that hellish emotional roller coaster of living and dying by the outcomes of individual trades. So I'm no longer concerned with the outcomes of individual trades or even a small string of trades. My focus is on the next 100 trades because I know if I focus on excellence and execution, my edge will demonstrate itself over an extended series of outcomes. A multi-strategy approach has delivered profitable annual returns since 2008. Since 2013, I've also been managing investor capital through a managed account service, delivering annual positive returns. I'm currently responsible for managing a multi-million dollar portfolio. Since 2010, I've mentored hundreds of private traders of all experience levels, from complete novices to former CME floor traders, in developing the technical and mental skills to reap consistent returns from the markets. In addition to my fund management and mentoring, I'm a resident market expert, exclusively providing market and trade analysis to Tickmill clients. I provide an in-depth daily market outlook, breaking down fundamental and technical drivers for the day ahead. I also provide daily technical trade setup videos through the Tipmill Trading View account. I'll post a link for that at the end of today's presentation. I also run Tipmill's e-mini strategy Facebook group where I post a daily trade plan in the pre-market uh, before the cash trading session opens in New York. I give my bias for the day ahead, specific action areas where I'm looking to engage the market. These pre-market plans have delivered over 3,000 points of profit since we launched in April of last year. The second Tickmill strategy group I run is for traders who really want to take their trading to the next level. The Tickmill Futures Telegram trading group is a real-time environment where on a daily basis I share in-depth insights, analysis, and real-time trades. I also provide live commentary during the opening hour of the cash trading session in New York. This allows traders to essentially see in real time how I dissect the market and identify asymmetric trading opportunities. These sessions act as a platform helping traders to develop a professional, consistent approach navigating the markets and the mental mind games that must be mastered to make it as a profitable market operator. Okay, so that gives you a flavor of where I'm coming from. 
Uh, let's jump into today's charts. Um, as always, I'm going to run through the charts that I'm tracking, the setups that I potentially see developing for today or uh, in the next couple of days. If you have any questions, just drop them into the chat box and I'll cover them off at the end. Equally, if you have a chart you'd like me to take a look at that I don't cover in, uh, in my presentation, you can just drop the, uh, the name of the instrument into the chat and at the end I'll pull up a chart and give you a view on what I, uh, on what I can see. So we're going to start, as always, with the S&P 500 using the E-mini futures contract. Um, I've been bullish the, uh, the S&P, certainly once we took out the resistance at the 40, 50 level, and uh, we traded to that first target, the equality objective, uh, the, the extension of the equality objective through uh, 41.32. I'm now looking for today any pullbacks into this high volume area here, uh, 41.18 to 41.24. I'm going to be watching for bullish reversal patterns there to engage on the long side. And my target now is the 42.20. And that's important because it represents uh, the 161 extension versus the swing structure here. And it also has a daily projected range resistance, the weekly R1 just below at 42.14. And it also represents the 50% correction from the all time highs versus our, uh, our swing lows. So I'm going to be watching very carefully how we trade into this area. Uh, from there, I'll be watching for bearish reversal patterns and certainly thinking about a test of trendline support back down to the 41.11 area. On the basis, if we can hold, if we can get a, a print above the 42.21, that 161 extension, that would suggest that we have uh, a further upside to come. And again, I personally am viewing this as a bear market rally. I don't believe that we have seen the lows in this market yet we possibly could have done, but the balance of probabilities from my perspective and uh, being involved in the markets for nearly 20 years now, I would suggest that we've got uh, more downside to come. But we trade the, 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 the chart and the time frame that we're using. And for me at the moment, I I'm, uh, I'm remain bullish. And really, it would take a loss of the trend line support uh, back down through 4080 uh, for me to start to think about uh, getting bearish here. So I'm looking for a test into this 4120 area, this high volume node, and uh, I'm going to be looking to engage on the long side, targeting 4220s as the next upside objective in this, in this sequence. NASDAQ, similar idea here. NASDAQ is be more bullish, uh, really, than the, uh, the S&P. And we have taken out this uh, 161 extension so again, this next high that we see here, that I personally will be looking to fade into that monthly R1, uh, daily range resistance and weekly range resistance. So anything into that 3,500 area, I'm going to be watching as long as we maintain uh, bearish momentum divergence here. I think we see a nice corrective move. But again, I still, once we get that correction, I'm going to be looking again to the long side. So anything back down, taking... Uh, through this value area here at uh, just below 13,000. Anything into this trend line support that develops with this low, uh, low volume node here. Uh, I'll be watching for bullish reversal patterns again to re-engage on the long side, looking for another leg of upside to follow. And again, in terms of thinking about the downside for me, we'd really have to take out this trend line support uh, to suggest that uh, we're going to trade lower and look at the value area high here, 12,287 as, uh, as the next area to test on the downside. But for now, paying attention to how we trade when we get into this projected ascending trend line resistance, monthly R1, and the range resistance is there for the daily and weekly time frame. Dow Jones, YM, similar scenario really. What I'm looking for here is a test into the 33,250 area. I'm watching for bearish reversal patterns there. This will complete a seven swing sequence, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So from there, as long as we maintain momentum divergence here, I'm looking for a corrective leg. And the, what I've drawn there is actually a symmetry swing versus this last corrective phase there. So if that develops from uh, the, that target zone, I'm going to target a test of the high volume node and back into the breakout point here at uh, 31,830 is going to be the downside objective there. 
uh, on that move. The Russell, also sh showing strength. I'm looking for any move now into the 1950 area. As long as we maintain momentum divergence, I'm watching for bearish reversal patterns. And again, then we're trading it from the short side, looking initially for a move back into this volume area here, uh, 1884, and then the projected pitchfork channel support at 1860. DAX, so the trade that I shared um, last week or the week before, it's traded two target now. We were looking for a gap fill here at the uh, 13,783. We've got that gap fill, so that sequence is complete now. So we'll just remove that and we'll look at where the next opportunity is. So what I'm looking for here will be any um, pullbacks now to, uh, to find some support. Let's see where we're looking at. So any pullbacks into 13,593. I'm going to be looking on the long side. Again, looking for one more push higher here. And what we're looking at then is a, um, a quality objective versus this swing low into this swing high and this swing low. So that gives us 13,967. So I'm gonna be watching uh, as we trade into that area, as long as we maintain momentum divergence, which are bearish reversal patterns to engage on the short side, and I'm targeting a move back down then into this 13,300 area. And, it, and again, from there, watch then for bullish reversal patterns to engage on the long side. And I think we can get a test up into 78.6% retracement and the trend channel resistance coming in 14,230 is my game plan now for the DAX. Nikkei, this trade has, uh, has developed. I've shared it in the uh, TradingView account. So what I'm looking for here now, as long as we maintain support at the 27,820 area, I'm looking for a fifth wave extension up through the trend channel resistance. However, once we get there, certainly if you're long this, you want to be uh, risk-free at that stage, but I'm ultimately looking for a move up into the uh, pivot cluster here, 28,785 up to 28,880. Watch for bearish reversal patterns there to engage on the short side. And I think we get a move back down into trend channel support at 27,100. 50. Moving to the dollar index. So versus the swing high that we have in place at 107.33, I have a downside objective at 104.23 uh, for the dollar index. At this stage, it would take a close back through that uh, 107.35 to, su to suggest this corrective phase is over. But for now, I'm working on the premise that we're going to see a double correction here I'm targeting, we've got the value area low, we, weekly projected range resistance, 104.20s is the target now uh, for this move to the downside. And then from there, I will be thinking about long positions again in the dollar, looking for another move to the upside. The, the next leg higher has a target for me anyway, at, at, uh, at 110. And if we trade into this 104.20 area, as the equity indexes are making their next leg higher, that would give some synchronicity in terms of correlation in the market for the equity indexes to top out in the near term, dollar to bottom out in the near term, and the dynamic to uh, reverse. Euro dollar. Again, we versus the swing low that we have in place here at the 10097, we have a target a quality objective, 10420s. Um, so that's what I'm looking for. If we get into this area, I'm then going to be watching for bearish reversal patterns to re-engage on the short side. I have a downside target at 98 for the euro, and that will coincide with the dollar index, testing into that 110 area that I just mentioned. Uh, any close back through the 10090 will be a bearish development, and then we'll be looking at short positions to, for the break of the prior cycle lows here and on route to that 98 test. Sterling dollar traded into our equality objective at the 122.85. You can see we've had a nice reaction there. We're now looking to take out trend channel support. The next downside objective here for the sterling dollar is gonna be a test of the high volume load, 119, uh, sorry, one, uh, value area low, 119.70. 
And then I've been looking for any pullbacks to find resistance uh, like so. And I'm looking for us to retest the prior cycle lows en route to an idea 115 in terms of sterling. So nice reaction from the equality objective, taking out the trend channel resistance. We look for the next correction uh, to stall out just below 121.70s, and then that will be the next leg to the downside underway for sterling dollar. Dollar yen. So we have, uh, we've got this initial decline here. I'm looking for a three-way corrected move to stall out into the high volume node, 136.17s. I'll be looking to engage on the short side, the initial target is going to be a test of 130 uh, as the next downside of the objective for the dollar yen. So we'll see, getting a bit of a pullback here now. What I'd look for is a low to develop somewhere into that 132.40s to get that next leg of corrective upside before we take another move to the downside. Euro yen. My target area here, I was looking for the euro yen to test this value area low. Don't know if we're even going to get that high now. Uh, 137.20s was the area I was looking at for a rejection. If we, uh, if we close at or below 135.60s, then this looks like a short now. And we can look for another leg to the downside to complete a sequence here. So I'd be looking for a move into 132.60s before we see another corrective attempt higher in, uh, in Euro Yen to, to test that value area low from below. And then we look for another move to the downside in terms of Euro Yen. Sterling Yen, similar scenario here. We, uh, we trade into that low volume area and we are pulling back pretty hard. Obviously dire uh, economic forecasts out of the UK stay out from the Bank of England. And so uh, we are seeing some weakness here in terms of sterling across the board. Doesn't really, <clears throat> the size, size of this candle uh, isn't really one that I would be looking to, uh, to personally trade at this stage. I'll wait for the, uh, the next low to develop, and then we'll look for a, uh, a move, a corrective move to the upside to play. There isn't really an opportunity for me there at the moment. Aussie yen. Testing the value area high. So this one is going to give us something. So we're testing right into the value area high, the middle of the range. So if we can close back through uh, the 92.70s, then I'm looking on the short side here. And the target for this move is going to be 90.33. So we'll see how this four hour candle closes. Uh, but this could be a decent opportunity on the short side in the Aussie yen. CAD yen, uh, looking for the CAD yen to test into trend line resistance here and the equality objective versus the swing low at 102.80s. Maybe we do a double correction here now. So when I say double, what I'm talking about is something like this. And then get a move into here before the next leg to the downside in terms of uh, the CAD yen. Aussie dollar. So we've broken out of the bullish trend. So at the minimum here, what I'd be expecting now from the Aussie dollar, let me just remove that, is a quality objective. So let's see. So I'd look here for the Aussie dollar to trade on a break through the value area high here, down in, and then use that as resistance. And then we get that move. Oops. Uh, uh, then we get this move down into the equality objective and then we'll see from there if the bulls re-engage for another leg to the upside or do we have a more meaningful high in place we know that we've got that 6640 as the weekly equality objective you can look back through the trading view videos I've, uh, I've done a few about that if uh, if we get down through the 6730s that's going to make this an impulsive move and then we'll be looking for a five wave extension down into that 6640 weekly downside objective. So we're watching the Aussie over the coming sessions. Um, at a minimum, what we'd look for now would be a break of this uh, trend channel to uh, encourage short positions. 
and then we'll see how we trade, how, if the market responds at the equality objective, we've got the value area low just below there. And if we break through there, then my bet is that uh, we are trading down to target the 6640s on the downside. Similar setup here in the Kiwi. Not as clear a cleaner trade for me at this stage, um, but a lot of congestion here. So uh, I'm gonna pass on that one. I'd rather focus on the Aussie at this point. Gold. This trade's working really nicely. Uh, we, haven't even, we haven't pulled back sufficiently to, to add to positions yet. Um, this was one that I highlighted a couple of weeks ago in real time and, uh, and is running a decent amount of upside at the moment. So I'm looking for any pullbacks in gold now into the trend channel support to engage on the long side, uh, adding to long positions to, uh, to continue to grind this out to the upside. I think we've got a, a, a pretty decent tradable low in place at the moment with gold. And this is looking like uh, we're gonna see a five wave sequence here. So once that first wave completes, then we're expecting a three wave corrected move versus this impulse. And then that should give us an, at least another uh, equal legs objective in terms of gold. So let me just tell you, give you a rough idea of what it is I'd be thinking. So let's say we top out into the trend channel resistance. So that's going to be our first leg. So even if we just think in terms of a minimum of a three-wave corrective move, this is the type of uh, structure I'd be thinking about. Actually, I'm going to just get rid of this for now. So let's extend this out. So the minimum for me in terms of this trade now would be the equality objective up towards 1900 on the upside. So there's plenty of scope as far as I can see at this stage for, uh, for further upside in gold. And I'm gonna be updating that one through the TradingView channel in, uh, in coming sessions and I'll, uh, I'll keep you posted on that. Silver, similar scenario, looking for a wave, uh, looking for a fifth wave to complete here. And then I'm gonna be watching for three wave pullbacks uh, to engage on the long side in terms of silver. And then we'll be looking for an equality objective once we've got that potential swing low in place. Again, I'll keep, uh, I'll keep updated on that through the TradingView account. Uh, nothing to do at the moment in uh, crude oil, but if we are getting close. I've got a, an equal and equality objective at the $86 level. And that's gonna be one that I'm really paying close attention to. Again, I'll be looking to build a longer term swing position in crude there, if once we test into that 86 area, let me just flip out to the daily here and I'll show you the setup. So this is the bigger game plan for crude oil. <clears throat> so here's our equality objective, coincides with a nice little uh, low volume node there. So what I'm anticipating here with crude oil is we get this move into here, and then at a minimum, I look for a move up into the value area high, um, at 107.25. So really decent scope for, uh, for a good position trade in terms of crude oil. Just got to sit tight and wait for that 86 test. And then we'll be watching for daily reversal patterns to engage on the long side in terms of crude oil. And again, if you want to follow along, I'll post the link for the trading view video updates so you can, uh, you can see how that one progresses. And we'll finish up looking at Bitcoin. So Bitcoin, I'm looking for a move into this area here, the value area high, 22,140. From there, I'm watching for bullish reversal patterns to engage on the long side. First target is going to be a test of the 25,000 level. And then if we can uh, get shallower pullbacks in three wave corrective moves, then we can start to build hopefully uh, to the upside. The alternative scenario is we take out this trend channel support. If we do, then the weekly downside target is 12,185. Um, but I'd anticipate at this stage, given that we're, we're in the dog days of summer now, August tends to be a ranging type environment, a lot of chop. Uh, what I've been looking for is a bit of back and forth here in terms of Bitcoin uh, before we get that next meaningful leg to the downside. But that 12,185 level is really going to be key and one where I will uh, be potentially looking to build a longer term position in Bitcoin. 
So that's uh, the whistle stop tour of the charts I'm looking at. Let me post a couple of links into the chat for you for those who uh, want to follow along. Uh, for those who want to join the Tickmill Futures Group and get my daily trade plan for the S&P 500, there's a link there. You just request access and I'll, uh, I'll let you into that group. And I'll leave you with the uh, trading view account. You can, uh, you can follow along again with, uh, with daily trade setups that I post. Normally about three to, to five sometimes, depending upon the market action. Okay, are there any questions? Equally, if you don't have a question, uh, typing an N in the chat box is helpful. Or if you'd like me to take a look at a chart I haven't covered, uh, you can just type the instrument into the chat and I will uh, I'll give you a view on that. Okay, don't see any questions coming through at this stage. So I'm going to wrap this session up here, guys. Uh, thanks for your time today. I hope you found this useful. And as always, traders, plan the trade, trade the plan, and most importantly, manage your risk. Until next week, thanks very much.